Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We are here with a super fun project to end the week with our storybook gnomes. I am super excited for this. Um, if you were with me at the Idaho retreat, you've already seen this project. Um, but now we're going to see it and we're going to make it together. So I'm super excited. This was a happy accident. Um, I was trying to make one of my vertical um, advent calendar box books. Look at how amazing. And I was talking and looking at somebody else's project and I cut my chipboard too small. And I had only brought two, I think one or two pieces of chipboard with me. Um, and then I cut my spine to make a horizontal instead of a vertical. But I absolutely love, love, love this happy accident. It is a great, great project. It's super fun. You open it up and inside you can put little crafty trinkets. If you're giving it to a crafty friend, you can throw some candy in there. Um, whatever you have. You know, you can put that in there. Like if you have some, um, I don't know. There's some crafty things you can throw in there. Um, yeah. So just throw all that kind of stuff in there. If you're giving it to a child, you can throw different types of candies. The box is pretty big. It's a two by two box. Um, well, two inches squared by one inch. And, um, so when I made the box, um, I did purchase this alphabet set that had the numbers. It is Stampin' Up, but it has since retired, so that is super sad. So you can use whatever letters um, and numbers you have, whether you have stickers, um, you can handwrite it, you can print stuff from your computer. Um, you can use the stamp set that is the, um, the letters and numbers with the little ticket punch. That would be really cute um, as well. So use what you have. But um, yeah, I'm so excited. This is how it looks standing up. You can add a ribbon closure, but um, I didn't find it necessary. Mine stays closed for the most part. So here's the back. I didn't do anything on the back because the paper was super busy and it just looked beautiful as is. And here's the spine. So we might change it up a little bit. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. All right. So for this project, you're going to need the following. You're going to need two pieces of chipboard that are six by eight. These are the chipboard pieces out of the um, paper pumpkin. So utilize everything, guys. This is great thick chipboard that is perfect for this project. So two six by eight pieces and then one two by eight. Two by six. Look at me. Two by six. That's how I got it. Um, originally it was supposed to, you know, be vertical like this with the spine in the middle, but um, I did my spine two by six by accident and now it's a horizontal, right? There you go. So one, two by six. Okay. Cardstock, you're going to need two sheets that are eight by 11. Cut that half an inch off. Um, and then you're going to need 12 pieces that are four by four square because you're going to make your boxes, right? Here's one of our boxes. And then 12 pieces that are four and a sixteenth by four and a sixteenth. So that is the little tiny tick mark after the four. Um, let me see if I can get in there. It's not going to zoom properly because I took my zoom off so you don't have to hear it. But, um, and you can see my light. But it's this tiny tick mark right after the four. I know it's blurry, but you see there's the four. And it's this tiny little tick marker right after it, okay? Tiny little tick mark. So you just need it slightly bigger than four. All right. Okay. Right. 
so let's go ahead and let's make our boxes okay so you're gonna need 12 pieces that are four by four so let's cut out our four by four okay you're gonna score it on all four sides at one inch when I'm doing something small like this I just use my paper trimmer so one inch one inch one inch and one inch okay so we're gonna varnish all four sides and I'm not going to make 12 boxes on camera because I, I already have them done. But I just want you to see. It's just a regular box. We're going to snip up to the first score line, up to the first score line, rotate, snip, snip. Okay? Easy stuff. Miter. So take a little chunk out of either side of your squares, ignoring your rectangles see rotate chomp chomp and chomp and chomp okay glue you can use your adhesive of choice I choose wet glue just because for me it's faster some people do not like wet glue so use your tear and tape you need your very strong adhesive for these because you don't want it to fall apart, right? So no like tape runner or anything like that. Unless you have like super duper tape runner. Okay. So there's your box and just make sure your ends are completely flat on the side. There's your bottom box. Go ahead and pause and make all 12 of those because we're going to need 12. Keep them separate. Um, I put mine in a Ziploc bag. Um, I don't even know what I did with the bags. But one says bottom and one says top. So that way I know. Okay. All right. Let's make our tops. Four and one sixteenth by four and one sixteenth. So four and the one little teeny tiny tick mark. So it's before the eighth. So that's the sixteenth of a mark, okay? And again, score it at one inch on all four sides. Okay, so the lid is four and one sixteenth by four and one sixteenth. Scored at one on all four sides. Okay. Same thing. Let's burnish. So for me, I would cut all 12, um, burnish all 12, and then chomp all 12. That's just how I did it. It doesn't take that long. Or you can do each box individually. I don't know whatever makes you happy no this one I did not burnish with my burnishing tool because I'm not actually using this but if you forget to burnish go ahead and do it after you cut a burnish box is a lot nicer it goes together nicely so there you go Again, with the glue. And just build your box up. All right. And one more tab. Just making sure your corners are flush and even. Okay. So there you go. Just make sure your box fits. It should. If you measured correctly, make sure it doesn't fall out. 
Um, if your box easily falls off, that means you cut your lid a little too big. And so you'd want to you want to redo that because nothing is more embarrassing when you give something to someone and then like that happens. Now I had that box halfway off so it would fall off when I open the book, but if you have them correctly in there, see it doesn't fall off. But um, if the box is too loose, and then when you open your box, it's just going to fall and everything in it is going to fall out. So just kind of test it before. This one right here is a little, uh, a little too loose, but um, it doesn't fall off when I shake it. So I just kind of kept it. Okay. So as long as your box doesn't fall, the bottom doesn't fall out, you should be fine. Okay. All right. So the other trick I like to do is I like to put the tabs on the opposite side. This, I know that sounds weird, but this is what I'm on about. So you see my tabs were there and there. Okay. So what I'm going to do with my top, let me just color in the tabs so you can see the tabs. I like to make them go like this. So tabs, the bottom tabs go left and right and the top tabs go top and bottom like this. Okay. So that way there's top tabs on this side and bottom tabs on that side. So that we have tabs on all four sides. I, I think it gives the box a little bit more strength when you do it that way. Um, if you forget, it's it's not a big deal. I think it's just me being me. <laughs> I don't know if this is really a thing, but in my heart it feels like it's correct that if you have the tabs on opposite sides, it gives your boxes more stability. Now, if I accidentally glued them the other way, I didn't care. I mean, it's not a huge deal, okay? But it's just a nicety. So that's that. All right. So pause the video, make all of your boxes. If you haven't already done that, um, yeah, do that now before we move on. Okay. So with your boxes, your tops, I tend to decorate after the box is put together only because I need to make sure that it's not going to slip off. If, if you decorate when the box is flat and it's too big, now you have to trash all of that and start over. If I wait until the box top is made and I know it fits, I'm comfortable putting my decoration on there, okay? That's my spiel. Um, because we're human, so we don't always measure correctly the first time. Or you're watching TV, you know, and Sophia says something hilarious and you laugh and you mismeasure. Yes, I watch the Golden Girls when I'm crafting, but um, yeah, so it happens. So I personally like to wait until they're put together, then I decorate it, but you do you, boo. Okay, so I decorated this one with the copper foil paper and a piece of the DSP. These ones here, I just use the DSP. So I wanted a bigger border. Normally, I don't like big borders, but this time I did. Um, this paper is one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. And if you want the two layers, um, the copper is one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths, and the DSP is one and three fourths by one and three fourths. Okay, so that's your preference. Measure your box, if you will. Your top box is going to be two and a sixteenth by two and a sixteenth, I think, or maybe two and an eighth by two and an eighth. I don't know. So just measure your box and go accordingly, or you can do mine which again um, was one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths for that bottom layer. And then the top layer was one and three fourths by one and three fourths. If you want that double layer or if you want just that top layer, it's still the one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. Okay. 
I just wanted more of the box to show because the paper is super busy. Right. All right, now we're gonna cover our chipboard. So let's go ahead and pull out our two pieces of chipboard. I like a ton of adhesive, okay? You can use less, you can use wet glue, um, what, whatever you like. I prefer loads and loads and loads of tape. Um, I prefer tape over wet glue in this process because I don't want to see the glue lines and when I'm covering with a thick cardstock like a Stampin' Up! cardstock you see glue lines very easily. So I know I'm going to cover it but I don't want to see the glue lines so I use tape. I use an excessive amount of tape I'm not going to lie. Y'all call me out on it. I know that I just it makes me happy. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm paying for it myself. Y'all don't pay for it, so leave me alone. <laughs> I cover mine, my chipboard, and my spine. I cover it. Okay, leave me alone. <laughs> All right. So what I like to do is to take my paper, which this is gonna be eight by eleven. Um, the reason why it's eight because you need an inch on either side. of paper, right? So, what I like to do is I'm going to show you in this other piece that doesn't already have tape. I like to go ahead and score mine at one inch um, on both sides of the short side. And one inch. Okay? Because I like to have a guide. Some people can eyeball it and theirs is completely straight and it's amazing. Your girl can't do that sometimes, especially late at night like right now. So I'm going to give myself this guide. Okay, so one inch on either side. Now what I'm also going to do is on the long side of one of them, I'm going to give it the one inch. Okay, so I have one inch on three sides. Now I'm going to add my sticky tape, which is just a quarter inch sticky tape onto the right side that does not have that score line. And I'm gonna attach my two pieces of cardstock at that one inch mark. Um, you have to excuse my, my paper because I mismeasured. So I don't know if my light is catching the two score marks, but I mismeasured. Yeah, you can see it here. So this was only half an inch, but I needed an inch. So, you know, it is what it is. All right, so at this point, you know, everyone does theirs differently. I go ahead and train my paper the whole length at the one inch mark. I might turn this in because the grain, you gotta go with the grain, you'll fill it. So the, le the least resistant part, but that looks better on my spine. Mm. Okay, it's not going to go that way. All right. So go ahead and burnish it lightly. You don't want to stress your, your score lines right now. Okay, we don't want to stress them, so burnish it lightly. Let me put this away. Okay, now I have this, those two and this one here. Okay, so we have this long 22 by 8 inch piece of paper. So basically what you're going to do is lay your chipboard. I haven't taken any tape or anything off. I'm just laying my chipboard, okay? I personally do not care if this spine is in the middle of my spine, if that makes sense, or the connector piece. I, some people, they go crazy and they put their, their spine piece in first and then they do all this and all this. I don't care because you're going to cover up anyway. Look, it's covered. My spine is right there. 
my connector pieces right there. I, I, I don't, it, it doesn't make me know, never mind. Because you're only going to see, what, an eighth of an inch of it. So I don't, I don't care. That's my spill. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take off my 9,000 pieces of tape backing. Your backing should come off easily. If it doesn't come off easily, that means that you did not um, get a good adherence. Just varnish over it like that one. It didn't want to peel off because your tape backing should peel off from any point that you pick at it. And that's with any name brand of the tape. Okay. I just tend to like the bigger pieces. Stampin' Up! doesn't have the bigger sizes. They have quarter inch and that's it. So I use what I, what I use. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and line, my up in my, line mine up in my guide. If you are not comfortable doing this with score tape, all you have to do is rub a little bit of glue stick like generic kids little school um, little school glue stick over your um, tearing tape and um, it gives you some more wiggle room but for me that allows me to overthink it and that's when I get into problems okay this next part is again something I prefer to do I take my quarter inch score tape and I place it here. Okay. That's what I do, but some people don't. Now, there's controversy between do you leave a quarter inch, do you leave an eighth of an inch, what do you leave? Um, I typically leave... I don't even know what the measurement is. Mm. It's a little bit more than an eighth of an inch, but less than a quarter of an inch. If that makes sense. Um, there's no exact measurement for that. I've seen people who have done two widths of chipboard. Like they could put it like this. Um, I've seen people do... A full quarter inch um, personally I think a quarter of an inch is too much because that gives a lot of room for it to tear between the two pieces of chipboard but um, you know you're, you're gonna do what makes you comfortable because I'm gonna do what makes me comfortable and that is about three quarters of the way on my score tape I don't know what that measurement is. So I guess it is like, no, it's, it's a little less than two whiffs of chipboard. I don't know. That's just how I do mine. I, I don't know how to explain it any other way. So I'm sorry if that's confusing, but I, I don't know how to explain it any other way. Okay, and the same thing with this one. I'm going to put my tear and tape down. Peel it. Oh, see, I did not get a good adhesion on that one. Ouch. Okay. That lifted up. I didn't like that. There we go. Same thing, take all your backing off. Um, when I only had the quarter of an inch size tape, yes, I use like half a roll on each piece of chipboard. Um, I just, just like it, I guess. All right, again, I'm gonna go three quarters of the way. 
just kind of making sure your chipboard is in the right place. Lay it down, fold it over, varnish, 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 and we're done. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take my tape, and again, actually before I do that, what I'm going to do on this right hand side, I'm going to go ahead and measure out an inch, and I'm going to cut the rest off. Because I need, I want my sides to be even. Oh, I guess I could have just used my paper trimmer. Huh? That would have made more sense. Oh, look at that! That was exactly an inch off. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and take your bone folder or something. And just make sure that this side here has your um, inch score marks as well. It just is easier to train your paper if it knows where to go. This step is absolutely optional, but see how easy that went? Okay. So now we're just going to go ahead and train all of our paper. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my score tape and put entirely too much on here. And keep going. This is 3 eighths of an inch, but again, if you only have the quarter inch, that works too. Or you can use all wet glue, or you can use bigger size tape. This is just what I like to do. So I do my long sides and then my short. Um, some people swear by short than long. I don't think there's a difference other than your preference. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. I know a lot of you asked me, this is a little chiseler. Um, I got this um, at, um, oh my gosh, I just lost the name. I got this at Miss Connie's. Um, I like to use those better than a bone folder. They're easier for me to hold. Um, I also got this um, in the mail. I think this was like the gas company or the trash company scrape grease into the trash and white pans yeah so this is from the um the trash company so i just use these little scraper things um i prefer them over a bone folder i do have 9,000 bone folders these are all the i do like the stampin up ones i don't know if it's teflon or not but this one i've had since 2008 and it's amazing so it's just whatever you prefer and i like the thumb holes on the scrapers so there you have it. Okay. So I outline and tape. I'm going to inline. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to put tape on the inside here as well. Again, I use entirely too much adhesive, but I have budget for adhesive, right? Okay. So I do my two long sides. My two short sides. And I'm going to do my middle. I think I need a tape intervention. Make sure all of it is good to go. I'm going to go ahead and miter. So basically what you're going to do is get as close 
to that tip without going over that cross line. So here's your cross line where the two score lines make an X. You want to make sure you leave enough room to um, wrap your corner. So I prefer to do mine like that. I know there's a square method where you could just cut that square out. Um, I used to do that, but um, I don't know. I just like this way better. To me, it's faster. I do the long side first, and then I do the short side. And then here we go. Here we go. So there's still a little bit of that score mark, score line on that corner, which you can cut it off. It's easier to cut it off than add it back on. You can add it back on. It's just, it's a little bit of a pain. So some people like to just chomp straight through, but I like to do one side, one side, one side. I don't know. Some days I go straight through, some days I don't. I don't know. It's just whatever you feel like. I've tried every single method. There's not one that's better than the other for me personally. Um, so just do whatever. Okay. So I took all my score tape off. I'm taking my wet glue. And I am not doing anything. I'm running it along my seam, being very generous with that wet glue, okay? The reason why I do that is so that way, if my paper decides to crack, my wet glue is right there to keep it intact, right? And then I go up here again, excessive probably, but you know what? My seam don't crack. There we go. Just make sure you get all that glue in there. Um, this is where I do need a bone folder because I need something fat. To go in here. I just kind of gently saw in there. So that way when you do like this, your book's ready to go. So you, you're going to have a little bit of cracking whenever you use cardstock um, on that overlap. But see that wet glue? You can't even see that cracking. If you use um, your DSP, your designer series paper, instead of cardstock, you won't have that cracking at all because it is a thinner paper. It is easier, but you use a lot more of the paper. So cardstock is cheap. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing. Generous, generous amount of glue. Oh, I didn't even take these off. Yeah, you were supposed to take these off before you glued down. <laughs> you absolutely were. I don't know how I missed it, but there we go. Problem solved. Except for this one. Um, where's my pokey tool? Just gotta grab it with the U pick. And pick it out. Or just leave it alone and call it done. Which of course I'm not going to do and I'm probably going to ruin my book trying to do this. Okay, I got it. It really wasn't that big of a deal that I just made it. <laughs> now I got to re-glue. Because I did all that. That's okay. 
just going to put my layer here, which again is optional. Lay it down. And no, your paper is not going to go exactly on that score line that you made. Um, that's why you have to varnish it afterwards. Like that, like so. And I have a tiny bit of cracking on that seam, so I'm just going to add a little bit of wet glue right there. And just get that cracking adhered because it's already wet on the inside, and so it's wet on the outside. So the crack be gone. The magic of wet glue, right? Okay. And again, I need my chunky bone folder in these cracks and just make sure your book can do like that. Just be careful you don't get your um, small edges glued together by accident. Yes, I have done that. Okay, and that one down, varnish it, and this side down and varnish it. All right, your next piece of paper, this again is an optional setting. Some people like to do a whole nother connector sheet and cover again so all the card stock's the same. I don't do that because I just am lazy and I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to use my DSP. So I'm going to pick a color for my middle spine and I'm going to pick a color for the two pieces, right? So your, your middle needs to be four inches at least by um, five and seven eighths because you want to cover the spine and then have some overlap onto the other pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Okay, so this piece I did at um, five and seven eighths by four. So I have a love hate relationship with covering spines. Okay, I really do. Um, I change the way I cover my spines probably every time I do a video or a um, album or advent calendar book, a uh, box book. I, I don't know. I don't know which way I like better or worse or indifferent. Today I'm going to go ahead and tape the perimeter with tape and I'm going to use glue on the rest. I think it also depends on how thick your paper is. If I'm doing this with cardstock, it's a super pain, but this designer series paper is thin and so it's not going to be that big of a pain. Okay? Because what you got to do is you got to make sure your book can still open and close. So if you lay it down and it's too tight, it won't, it'll either won't open all the way or won't close all the way. So what I'm going to do is just lay one side down. I'm going to generously put wet glue in that spine. I, I Again, I don't know if that's a good idea a bad idea for me it works okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get in that spine with my bone folder gently pushing because you know our paper is thin because I need my book to be open close open close okay I'm gonna gently see I'm not pushing it hard you're gonna see it come off while I'm making this other piece because I did not press it in there because I need this paper to be trained you're going to open and close open and close okay once I feel the paper has trained then I'm going to go ahead and lay it down all the way 
I'm sure there's a better method on how to do this. I just don't know how. Okay. See, it's still resisting me. It does not want to go in that crevice. And I don't want it to be wrinkled. And of course on camera, this is giving me absolute fit. It's usually not this hard. I think I said I'm overthinking it. There we go. And again, I'm going to get that piece in there, making sure that this opens and closes. The key is varnishing your paper into that indentation so it knows it needs to open and close, open and close. This one's just being a pain today. There we go. That's why some people like to do the one sheet of cardstock so that way it goes in there. But I have a harder time with the one sheet of cardstock. And as you can see, it will eventually do what you tell it with little to no wrinkles, no bubbles. I do have a big wrinkle right there, but that's going to get covered. And so I'm not going to be too bothered by it other than this next couple seconds. Okay. So there you go. I think if you use all wet glue, I think it's easier, but I don't know. Again, I change it up every single time. It just depends on if the paper wants to fight me or not. Okay. So next I'm going to go ahead and cut my paper accordingly to fit all the way up to that crease. So you're going to measure it. I know your chipboard's supposed to be six by eight, but um, it's not always that once you put the layers on and everything like that. Okay. So I'm going to cut mine to what I want it. Okay. And mine ended up being um, seven and seven eighths by five and five eighths. Pay attention to your directional paper to make sure you cut it correctly. The width is the seven and seven eighths and the height is the five and five eighths. So be mindful of that. Or if you weren't mindful, then your book is just going to be a vertical book. So if you cut your paper wrong and that's all the paper you have, just make it so your book opens like this. Who cares? No one's going to know what it was supposed to be. All right, so this one, I got cracking. I've never had cracking there. That means I put my... Normally when you have cracking on your spine like that, that means you put your chipboard pieces too close together. But I didn't. So it must have just been really rough when I was trying to put that spine piece in there. Again, it's fine. Hmm. You're just going to take your wet glue, put it in the crack, and seal your paper back up. I just never had it crack. It's interesting. I mean, again, it's going to get covered up, but... Hmm. Okay, well, first time for everything. All right, now here comes the fun part. We're going to go ahead and put our boxes on there. Again, just your bottom boxes. And you can line them up and space them. I actually painstakingly took a ruler and I lined all my boxes up to the best of my ability. They're a little bit off, as you can see here. It's okay. Um, I did a half an inch on the bottom and top. So I just took my ruler and a pencil. Actually, you know what I'm going to do instead of doing all that? Where's a piece of paper? I'm just going to make, I'm going to cut a half an inch off here. Okay. 
And then that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use that as my guide and then put my, gosh, what happened to my box? And then I can just easily line up my box on there. So I have it a half an inch um, from the top and bottom. And I want to say a quarter of an inch. Yep. A quarter of an inch from the left and right. So I'm going to make myself another shim quarter of an inch put that there there we go that's going to be so much easier than the pencil and then I don't have to erase all the pencil marks then I'm pretty sure I put a half an inch in between each box that makes my life so much easier Instead of having to do all the pencil marks, erase them, and all that. So I'll do this first couple with you, and then we'll go from there because this video is entirely too long. Alright. So, and all I did was just wet glue the bottom of the boxes. You can use your tear and tape or whatever strong adhesive you have. Okay. Alright. I bet if I had like that tape that you can remove, that would be even easier. Alright, I'm making sure my tabs are left to right. I'm gonna put that there. Oh my gosh, this is so much easier. Yes, thank you, brain. Okay. Put that there. sticking to my hands. I'm going to butt that right up against that one. Glue in the bottom of my box. 100% 5 stars recommend these shims. Making sure my tabs are left to right. Yeah. Yeah, man. Move my shim. I think that's what you call these things. That's what I'm calling it. Oops. Put it. Yeah, it helps when it's not stuck to your glue bottle. Get my third one. Line it up. Make sure you're getting all the way to the corners. And that leaves me with like a little more than a quarter of an inch from the right. But uh, that's okay. It gives me a whole half an inch. I don't know. I don't know. But it worked. It worked for me. That's what I'm doing. Because I my other one, it's a quarter of an inch. So... Yeah, that one's exactly a quarter, and this side is exactly a quarter. So I don't know what I just did, but it works. It's measured on there. Ah, that one wasn't exactly a half an inch, but that's okay. Oh, it was still wet enough. I can take it off. There you go. Move it over. That's why I like wet glue. Okay. There we go, that looks better. Okay, whatever. Okay. So I'm going to do the other side exactly like that because I want them to line up. So I'm not going to do this whole thing on camera because it's kind of boring and we're already at an hour. So, And I'm lining mine up with, 
Oh, I know what I did. I measured, when I did the original, I measured from the spine dent indentation to the box. So that is, that is about a half an inch. So, whatever. Line it up however you want. This time I'm measuring it with the side of my designer paper. All right, so I didn't separate my tops and my bottoms like I told you to. But I'm just making sure they're both going to be the same exact because now I'm just going to do a quarter of an inch from the side of my mushroom paper. So that way they both match, in theory. Let's check it out. They match, they match. No, they don't. Whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna put my boxes down on the bottom row. Okay, so I got all my boxes on. Um, <laughs> to be honest, when I turned the camera off, I just kinda eyeballed it. <laughs> it for the most part matches up. Um, you know, you can be as much or as little of a measuring Mary as you want to be. Um, cutting these little pieces of strips of paper were so much easier to get that lined up. So I did appreciate that. Um, but by the second one, I just eyeballed it and called it done. So now you're going to go ahead and put all your lids on. And you're going to decorate how you wish. Um, the reason it's easier to glue the bottoms without the lids because the lids are bigger. So you're going to have a little mismeasurement or something. I don't know. For me it was easier to go by the bottoms because they're two inch square than the tops which might be a little bit wonky because um, I'm human and I probably mismeasured. Alright, that one's a little bit more snug so maybe that one up there. So in theory, if your lids fit one bottom, they should fit all bottoms. But there we go. This lid felt a little bit thicker than oops. Make sure you know your direction. And here's the test. Yay, no falling boxes. I'm good to go. So now you're just going to decorate the covers and put your gnomes down. The gnomes are bigger than the boxes, so their hats do um, come up. You know, you could cut that if you want to, but it's okay. So my deskmate, Kathy, <laughs> she, I was not going to put the gnomes on there because they, they were too big. And I was like, it's going to be a problem. And it was like 10 o'clock at night and I was exhausted and I was being a crybaby. And she was like, looky here, kid. It'll be just fine. She's like, you have the half an inch. You're fine. Put it on there. If you don't like it, I'll take the whole thing. And it's fine. She was right. Shout out to Kathy. Boop, boop. You were right. So it looks great and it does not bother anything. Um, I just placed mine random. You can do numeric order. You can do boy, girl, boy, girl. Um, mine turned out to be boy, girl, boy, girl. Um, just a happy accident. I just was kind of going by the color of the hats. So you can obviously place it however you want. I'm going to decorate this one and I'll show you how it turns out. Okay, so unfortunately I did not like the mushrooms. So I went ahead and used my Playful Alphabet um, on the cover with the um, foil sheets, the copper foil sheets. I put the two gnomes here and the two snowflakes here. I don't know if it was a happy accident or by design that the um, snowflakes is the exact size of the dimensional, but um, it worked out. So here's the inside. I went ahead and used the insides of the letters and numbers to kind of give a little sparkle in that middle. And I just love how it turned out. I wasn't 
caring if the letters were crooked, if they were wonky, if they were whimsical, because this is just a fun album, and I didn't want it to be too serious, um, so I didn't mind. I just let them go where they wanted to go. And the cover, now I, I was measuring Mary on the cover, I'm not going to lie. I did use a, um, like a little shim again in my grid to make sure everything was straight, even though some of it looks like it's not straight, but it is, because I was measuring Mary. And then my spine, I did with the mushroom paper. And then the back, I just left it blank. I may add some stuff on the back. If I sell it, I'm going to add uh, my information somewhere on the back. But there's my project. Oh, a little tip if you're going to use these little letters. Um, put your adhesive sheet or your um, Taran tape or whatever adhesive tape that you have, put it on the back of your paper. And so when you go to cut out your letters, it already has adhesive on it. And so you just line it up. And yes, this was a zero instead of an O, so that's why I had to change it. But um, that was a great tip. Now, depending on what type of cutting machine that you use, I use my cutting machine with the metal plate for the for most of them, and it didn't cut through the sticker. Well, it kind of did, but not all the way. Um, for the majority of them. Now I forgot two letters, and so um, I ran it through my mini emboss, and it did cut all the way through the tape backing, which was fine because all you had to do was peel the tape backing off. So, you know, easy stuff, but it saves a lot of time and a lot of effort. Um, the first box I did, I did not have my adhesive sheets, and I forgot to put the tape on, so I just glued them. It wasn't a big deal. It just took more time. So that is my project, guys. I hope you like it. Tag me if you make it. Thanks for watching. Bye.